good, I sing. Tu gloria Jerusalem. You are the glory of Israel, and you sing. You the joy of Israel. Tu Letizia Israel. Then I will sing. Tu honorificentia populi nostri. You sing. Tu advocata peccatorum. If I was so confused so far, never mind. This is the part that we belt up the O Maria, okay? <laughs> everyone to Italy and uh, before we move on uh, okay, just to make sure ask yourself first things first why are you here is it because of money or, <laughs> or honeymoon or because friends invite so I'm here or you just want to get away from parents or something or just so fun to, to be like, with among friends but I this trip I find that the young adults like, have a heart that is really open and there is this desire for the Lord. But I think that the world is very noisy and like a place where we are at now, which is La Verna, um, we're more used to the word Mount Alvernia, is a place where I think like a friar here told us it's a place of detox. And we've just got so many things to just distract us. And I think that's the sign of the times today, especially for the young where we have multiple devices on our phones, uh, on our laptops. But is there one space for the Lord? And I think a place like this, after having spent nearly two weeks together, hearing so much information, I think this is just the right time and right space uh, for a heart that is so open, but sometimes a bit distracted, to actually come to the core of who they are when discovering who God is. We should be preparing them to be leaders for the church. Pope Francis has begun this whole process of synodal church and I think in line with that uh, it's important for us to begin to look at our young adults as leaders already today. Not future leaders but leaders and so for me to bring them on a pilgrimage is to anchor them to a certain spirituality. For me, as a Franciscan, I think Franciscan spirituality is important. With Pope Francis, it is the Francis moment. The issues that are relevant to church, to society, that has a basis in Franciscan spirituality. And so the pilgrimage is to bring a group of young adults to immerse them in the spirit of Francis and Claire, and hopefully to give them a very gospel-oriented vision of life. First of all, we actually didn't want to go overseas for our honeymoon. I wanted to stay at home and <laughs> save money. Yeah. But then we heard that there was a pilgrimage coming up and uh, we decided that this is the best way to kill two birds with one stone. Uh, it's very valuable for money because you get to go on honeymoon, see the world and also get to grow spiritually as well. But then we also thought about how being married is not just about just the two of us, right? Yeah, you said something about not being in our own bubble. Yeah, like not, not just being in our own bubble, but also being in a community. Yeah, living out our marriage within the context of, you know, other people as well. Yeah, 
And then we're also at like a crossroads in our relationship, having to make like big decisions like he's gonna go study in the US, do I follow now? And then I, you know, uh, compromise on my career, but do I wait and then like potentially compromise on our relationship? So like it's a really big decision that we are praying about and it's a good opportunity to go on this pilgrimage to have some silence and to really bring the focus back to God and pray about it. The shrine that speaks most to me was when we visited St. Mary of the Angels. But it wasn't the tiny chapel that caught my eye, but it was more at the altar in front, at which um, we had a small wooden statue of Our Lady. And at the point of time when I went there, the whole place was just dark. There was just this tiny spotlight on her, and then there was so much focus on her. And the moment I reached there, it just felt so peaceful. And the image of like um, a mother and like laying on her lap, just struck me very hard. Ah. In my current stage of life, right, I'm at the position where I need to kind of like think about my life a little bit more seriously. And I have quite a number of thoughts in my mind, especially with what next with my life, right? It's not that I don't know what to do with my life, or it's not that I think that God does not want me to do this. But I would rather think of it as like maybe at this moment I don't I'm not really clear of what I want, you know. So uh, in this pilgrimage, I actually just like try to be more grateful with each passing day, and then try to get as much inspiration as I can. Even we can go out of Singapore, it's something to be grateful already. We are blessed. We are blessed in this pilgrimage. That's what I have been experiencing so far. Friars that serve in Smota, I can see the examples they show from the figure of Saint Francis. But in this pilgrimage, the idea of poverty that I see from Saint Francis is even more radical. When I saw the fresco that he stripped off the garment and gave it back to his father, so the message that I give me is the detachment that he have is even the clothes that covers his body, he even detached it. So like, he was ready to give it 100%, give it all to God. Yeah, and when I was reflecting in the Chapel of Stigmata, there was one line that speaks so strongly to me. It says that when you want to have revenge or do something bad, look at the cross and let the cross transform you. Then I knew that in that chapel, there was a huge crucifix. Yes. Then at that moment, I became more aware of the presence of crucifix there. Yeah. 
You did close the eye. I think I learned a lot, especially from uh, people of different ages. Because with time, you have different experiences, right? Yeah. And I think it's a really rare opportunity for me to get these experiences without like me actually experiencing them myself, but listening to them, having an open heart, having open-minded conversations, and yeah, learning about faith also as they share about their experiences. Yeah, and I think like this trip is only temporary. Yeah, so it's really like seeing how, maybe not the same way as Francis, but how we can find our own ways to pull us back to the Lord whenever we stray. Mm. Yeah. When there are all the distractions back at home. De te altissimo porta significazione Altissimo onnipotente bon signore Tu e sole laude la gloria e l'onore E donne benedizione Oh, <laughs> 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 